collection here at the U.S.-Mexico Coin Convention. Tell me how you started this collection and why you put it together. Well, golly, I've been a collector of uh, Republic of Texas paper money since the 1960s. And in about 2002, I was in an antique mall and happened to see this uh, Mexican peso, 20 peso bill with Francisco Villa written across the bill. And so I bought it for $20, and so that was about 2002, and the rest is history. Porfiero Diaz was the president of Mexico and was first elected in 1876. He was a general during the French Revolution and was, became a, a hero to the Mexican public and was first elected president in 1876. He was re-elected seven times. As you pan to the left here, you'll see postcards which uh, commence, commemorate the uh, Centennial Day uh, Independency of Mexico from 1810 to 1910. It's a hundred year celebration. Then we see a picture of Mimi Diaz, his wife, and additional pictures of Porfiero. He was instrumental in uh, revolutionizing the Mexican army and increasing it to a to a hundred thousand to a, excuse me thirty thousand man army and expanding the railroads in uh, Mexico to foster the movement of goods and services. And you see pictures of the state banks. Each state in Mexico issued their own currency under charter, and they had to have 50% metallic contact and reserve. And then you see uh, pictures of the Ruales, which is a rural police force authorized under Porfiero Dios to maintain uh, police presence in the rural communities. And then there's some medals that were issued to the soldiers of the Mexican army under Porfiero Diaz's uh, rule. This is a case of uh, Francisco I. Madero. Madero was opposed to the dictatorship of Porfiero Diaz and in 1910 identified with uh, Orozco's army and negotiated a, a peace with uh, Diaz, and Diaz resigned and, and uh, exiled to, to Europe. Madero became president of Mexico, and you can see some of the staff and, and uh, pictures of Madero during the revolution. In 1913, the Revolutionary Medal was given later after the Revolution to recognize uh, uh, soldiers who fought during the Revolutionary period. And there's actually two, two periods. The first period is 1910 to 1911, and the second period is uh, 1912 through 1914. And this is representative medal of the first period. The money was actually printed after Madero's death, and they're called Dos Caritas, or Two Little Faces. Picture on the left of Madero and a picture on the right of Gonzalez. And they're printed uh, in denominations of one to 50 pesos. Again, these are pictures of Madero's cabinet and military organization. And Madero was 
deposed in a coup by Victorano Huerta in 1913, and it was called uh, the La Decina Tragica, and it lasted for 13 days. Madero was uh, deposed by the coup and later was uh, assassinated by, Mad by Huerta's uh, soldiers. Francisco Villa was basically a cattle rustler or a bandit. He identified with Madero as Madero was fighting the dictator Porfirio Diaz and enlisted under Orozco as a colonel and rose within a Madero's uh, military organization to the rank of general. And these are pictures of Francisco Villa in different battle settings. And there's one particularly piece of document here that was written by Jack Reed. He was a correspondent assigned to Mexico to travel with Villa during 1913-1914. And he was very favorable to the liberal cause that Villa was supporting and wrote a book covering insurgent Mexico, which was very popular in the Mexico and the United States. Later on, Reed went to Russia and wrote a book, The Tragic Ten Days of the Russian Revolution and he's the only American that is actually buried in the Kremlin in Russia. Additional documents of Francisco Villa ordering some rifles. And then Villa had a unique way of paying his troops. He forced his troops to pay for whatever they bought within the cities. But to provide them currency, Villa said if he just needed some money, he would print it. So he would crank up the printing presses in the various towns that he would capture and just print the money and distribute it to its troops to pay the merchants. There's additional pictures of Villa when he was assassinated. Much, How was he assassinated? Much, uh, this was just uh, assassinated in a car on the street. This was later in 1923 after the revolution was over. He was talking about again becoming a revolutionary and the powers that be decided it was time to make sure that he didn't rise to power again. There's a picture of uh, a young lady that uh, was a cashier in a local merchant store in Torreon. Villa was fascinated by her, took her to the chapel, found a priest, married her, put her in a fancy cabinet ca carriage, and uh, they drove out of town. So he was uh, quite a character, as much folklore history about Villa as there is actual fact. He was a unique individual. This is a case on uh, Victorano Carranza, and he restarted the revolution after Huerta's coup when he deposed Madero and then assassinated Madero. And under Carranza's leadership, Francisco Villa, and the Army of the North, and then Zapata with his army from Morelos were two forces that fought Huerta and eventually defeated him. And then Cranza became president of Mexico. But Zapata was very disappointed in Cranza as a leader and immediately published his Plan de Ayala and started a battle and revolution against Carranza. Villa supported Carranza for a period of time and then broke with Carranza and started his own revolutionary forces called the Villaristas. The picture of the currency is the first currency that was printed during the Mexican Revolution. From 1910 up until 1913, there was no revolutionary currency printed. The state banks were still in operation. 
But in 1913, Carranza needed funds to, to uh, pay for the revolution. And these are called uh, Monclovia notes. They were printed in uh, Monclovia, Coahuila. And these were the first notes of the, the Mexican Revolution. There is a watch that I acquired, which basically uh, was presented to Carranza prior to the revolution in about 1909. He was again a supporter of Diaz and being recognized for his valor during that period of time. During the 1910-1917 Mexican Revolution, there were a number of photographers who captured the brutality of the Mexican Revolution. Mario, Yance, and Gillian were in Manzalan, and they were key photographers who recorded much of the activity in that area. Many additional people were out of work during that period, and if they had a box camera, they would go around and photograph the revolution and sell their postcards for five cents or 10 cents to the general public, and especially to Americans back home who were fascinated with the revolution. Now, the revolutionaries, during photography of Yance and Gillian would in many times actually stop the battles so the photographers could take pictures. And then after the photographers were finished, they would restart the battles. Rather unique piece of history. A lot of these photographers are simply unknown to the general public, and many of them haven't been chronicled or given recognition for the photography that they were able to produce during that period of time. Victorano Huerta was a general under Madero in Madero's army and developed a group of people who fostered a coup against Madero and deposed him and became president of Mexico. There was general outburst of anti-Huerta sentiment throughout the Mexican population and Francisco Villa and Zapata sided with Carranza, Victorano Carranza to defeat Huerta and, and run him out of the country. A number of the postcards that were printed during that particular period of time showed the black hand of Huerta. And you can see those postcards and the black hand. La mano negra en Mexico. Like I say, there was significant anti-Madero feelings throughout the country. And it wasn't long before Huerta was defeated and exiled out of Mexico. Pascal Orozco and Emilio Zapata. Pascal Orozco was the general under Madero who fought and defeated Porfiero Diaz. After the revolution was over and Madero became president of Mexico. Orozco then split with Madero and again started up revolution in northern Mexico. Emilio Zapata was a revolutionary who operated much like the forces did in Vietnam. He would hit a particular area and then escape back to the mountains. He would blow up a train or a railroad and then escape back to the mountains. On the far right, you'll see some of the rare currency that was printed under Zapata's leadership, El Banco Revolucionario de Cuero. Many of these notes are very scarce, 
and hard to obtain. Zapata was quite a liberal and fought many people in Mexico called him the revolutionary leader of the people because he was he advocated the return of the hacienda land that had been confiscated under Porfirio Díaz back to the villages and back to the uh, peons and he was supported greatly by the average man and that's why I say he was the revolutionary leader of the Mexican Revolution to many people and the true revolutionary. Edged weapons of the revolution came from many different locations throughout the world. Spain, France, Britain, United States who had the metallurgical capability produced weapons to order for the federal government in Mexico. And Elmer, who were some of the people instrumental in helping you put this together? Well, I was a collector, as I said, of Republic of Texas paper money, and one of the dealers also was a Mexican Revolution collector. And he had bought Eamon Carter's collection, who was the uh, newspaper uh, owner of the uh, Fort Worth uh, Star-Telegram in Fort Worth, Texas, and was quite a collector, and the Eamon Carter Museum in Fort Worth is named after him. Anyway, he had a collection of Mexican Revolutionary currency that Crutchfield had purchased. Crutchfield had added to it for a number of years and uh, was about to liquidate the collection, break it up into pieces. And since I've always been sort of a student of history, I wanted to preserve it. So I literally bought the entire collection, which was about 600 pieces of currency on the Mexican Revolution. And so that sort of started my collection off. And another dealer that was instrumental is Corey Frampton here in Arizona, who's helped me. Another gentleman is in California, a dealer by the name of Ken Taboshnik, has been around for a long time and was also not only a dealer, but a Mexican Revolution collector. And one day there was a rare uh, Mexican Revolution note on eBay, and I was still sort of a young collector, and I thought, well, that was a pretty note, so I, I bid up the price quite a bit, and I won. And so it sort of shocked Simon Prendergast, who was in London, and also Ken uh, Taboshnik, who was a collector. And so Ken emailed me and got in touch with me and invited me out to California. So I learned a great deal from uh, Ken, who was a dealer. And those uh, three individuals were gratefully helpful in uh, establishing my historical knowledge of the Mexican Revolution. How would you counsel someone to form a world-class collection like you have? Uh, <laughs> you have to be willing to do a lot of historical search and study as well as uh, win the lotto. <laughs> because it is an investment. And you really can't look at it as an investment. It has to be something that you like to do. It has to be something where you're trying to preserve history. And I look at it from that standpoint, not as an investment.